In this video, we will pick up with the listings under the letter T and finish off the chapter. The first listing for the T's is the tailor with a thumb knot, which is tied at the end of thread. The tennis player has an entry describing a way to adjust a tennis net to more easily and nicely, according to Ashley. Small tackle is used, which consists of iron blocks and a small braided sash cord. The end is brought under a running part and jammed against the block. The tether ball player is next, and the entry describes how to make a tether ball. Small mesh netting is stretched over a tennis ball. The rope is brought up against the ball, and the net is then spliced into the rope. The next listing is a three-legged race with a hobble knot. Two round turns are taken around one person's leg and a square knot added. Then one round turn is taken with each end around the other person's leg. Next comes a trapper with the entry showing a snare suitable for large game. It involves bending down a branch, which will then slip with any disturbance of the rope. The last listing for the tees is a tree surgeon. A single round turn on a branch allows one to lower an object several times his own weight. Ashley says a timber hitch is one of the most practical hitches for slinging cylindrical objects. Entry 480 and 481 shows a tree surgeon's variation on the Magnus hitch. It works in the same principle as a camel hitch and the steeple jack safety belt hitch. All these knots allow for sliding up and down, but remain firm under a pull on the standing part. Entry 482 shows a loop in which the seat of the tree surgeon is slung. The only listing for the use is the upholsterer. For the tough knot, a length of strong twine is passed down with a needle, then up through a mattress. A short piece of wicking is placed at the bottom and top, and two half hitches taken with one end around the other. This is pulled tight and made fast with a half hitch in the same manner as the butcher's knot. Similarly, a button is attached with two half hitches and locked with a half hitch. Moving on to the W's, we have the weaver. Just as the method of tying characterizes the butcher's knot, Ashley says that the method of tying is a determining factor for the weaver's knot. The weaver's knot in entry 485 is usually tied in woolen cloth. The form of this knot is the same as a sheet bend. Entry 486 shows a double Polish knot. The knot in entry 487 is the same as a reef knot, but is tied by a different method. Ashley says it is hardly a good knot, as the end is likely to catch or snag and break the thread when passing through the reeds. The double weaver's knot is the same as a double sheet bend. Entry 489 is another double weaver's knot. The two ends lead in the same direction, which helps in weaving, since many threads are broken when the knots snag in passing through the reeds. The weaver's knot in 490 is identical in form to the left-hand sheet bend. It's inferior to the regular right-hand sheet bend, but the method of tying makes it one of the quickest knots to tie. Ashley says the knot in entry 491 has the best lead of the weaver's knots shown, as both ends turn backward. The left-hand sheet bend is used in commercial lace manufacture, and as mentioned previously, it can be tied very quickly. Unless the thread or yarn is very slippery, this bend will be quite adequate. The weaver's knot in entry 493 is used in the manufacture of banding, which is small braided rope that is used in cotton manufacture for small drives. Ashley says the ends have an excellent lead. The remaining knots for the weaver are used with mohair, which is a very slippery material and is the wool or hair of the Angora goat. Ashley gives some more details about his experiment for the Collins and Aikman Corporation, which was discussed in the previous video about the strength and security of knots. He was to find a mohair knot that wouldn't untie in modern fast-running machinery. The knots in entry 494, 495, and 501 were included in the knots for his experiment. Entry 494 describes a compact knot based on the harness bend. Ashley says it has a good lead and is more secure than the average bend, but slips quite a lot in mohair before it finally nips. For the experiment, a figure eight knot was tied in one end around the other and then spilled to engage the other end. Ashley says the ends have a good lead and the knot is tied in an interesting way. The English knot is an angler's bend that is quite bulky. 
and either unties or breaks after a few jolts in the loom. The English knot is less likely to slip with hitch ends, but is more likely to break. The double English knot, as well as the previous, has a bad lead and results in many broken threads. The double English knot with the ends hitched, according to Ashley, is ungainly and probably not used except experimentally. The mohair or Queensbury knot was a standard knot for mohair manufacture for many years. Ashley says that it's tied in the most ingenious way and is a bulky knot that needs to be woven very slowly into cloth. The knot in Entry 501 was an attempt to combine the best features of the last knot in a more compact form. Ashley says this knot hardly seems sufficiently secure for mohair and is bothersome to tie. He did note that it draws together nicely into a proper form when the standing parts are pulled. The last entry for the weaver describes a mohair knot that Ashley says is strong, symmetrical, handsome, and compact. This knot is noted as having a lot of initial slip. The next listing is the well digger. To support a drill when overhauling the drum end of the cable, a rolling hitch is made fast to the drilling cable. A well pipe hitch is used to lower or hoist a pipe. A sling is wound around a well pipe in a similar way to the well pipe hitch, and the bites are hooked to the block. The next listing is the whaleman. When hemp and flax whale line were used, a seized clove hitch was made fast to a harpoon chink. A double becket hitch is employed in bending the line to the eye splice in the harpoon warp. The last entry for the W's is the whipper. A double overhand knot that is tied in a cat of nine tails is termed a blood knot. Entries 509 to 511 list knots that are also used in the whip. They are the nine strand sinnet knot, three strand Matthew Walker knot, and man rope knot. The last and final listing for this chapter is the yachtsman. The half bow knot or draw knot is used in reefing, furling, and securing sail covers. The topsail halyard band is said to be a British yachtman's knot. This concludes the last listing in Chapter 2 of the Ashley Book of Knots. In the next video, we will start to look at Chapter 3, which deals with knob knots.